climate change is a global imperative. America's 5G networks are a big part of the solution. 5G is unleashing new use cases across industries that will help America meet 20% of its emissions reduction goals by 2025. How? New driverless cars and connected transportation systems will remove as much carbon as 106 million acres of forests. 5G-enabled production lines and machinery will optimize energy consumption equivalent to eliminating emissions from 156 million barrels of oil. A truly connected smart grid will support the adoption of greener forms of energy and have an impact equal to swapping 205 million incandescent light bulbs for highly efficient LEDs. Farms will be able to make more efficient use of water, monitor their crops, and automate operations, offsetting the impact of burning 30 billion pounds of coal. And 5G-enabled telehealth visits, remote work, and other day-to-day -day improvements will save enough energy to power 5.3 million homes. Together, that's like taking 72 million cars off the road. 5G is fighting climate change and transforming the way we live and work. Good morning. It is great to be here again. Now, I know it's hard to remember, but the last time we were in Vegas, we talked about what 5G could be. This week, we're here to talk about what 5G is. 5G is innovation. 5G is competition. And most importantly, 5G is here. 5G is our industry's fastest rollout ever almost 50% faster than 4G, thanks to billions and billions invested. And now, 5G is helping us meet today's challenges. As you just saw, nowhere is that more true than climate. Accenture projects that one-fifth of America's climate goals will be met by 5G innovations. I, too, share their optimism because across the country this year, I saw what 5G is making possible. In Michigan, Jim runs GM's Factory Zero. They are showing us what the future of U.S. manufacturing will be, using 5G to automate production and collect real-time data. And just down the street from here, Halo is relying on 5G to make its driverless cars available on demand. 5G makes Anand's vision now possible with reduced latency and faster speeds. <laughs> less cars, less parking, less gas. Sign me up. In Georgia, we are seeing the power of 5G to enhance agriculture. Liz and her team have created 5G soil sensors to help family farmers grow more with less. 5G is monitoring field conditions and could save farms nearly 40 million gallons of water a year. The energy industry is leveraging 5G's possibilities as well. Professor Liu of Virginia Tech is building a 5G smart grid, making it easier to adopt clean forms of energy that use remote monitoring. And on the other side of the country, in the Bay Area, Dr. Tom Osborne is working with the VA. They've developed new AR and VR services that help doctors consult with each other and their patients. Tom is leading that effort to take better care of our veterans and improve remote health care. Industry by industry, new entrepreneurs are innovating on this remarkable platform. For many Americans, the first 5G killer app is home broadband. Fixed wireless is not new, but the enhanced capabilities of 5G home has been a game changer. The fastest growing broadband provider is now a wireless company. We're reaching the underserved and the unserved. In rural Washington, Jessica and her daughters had no access to home broadband. Thanks to 5G Home, they can now do what so many of us take for granted, from homework to remote work. And we are providing choice for people like Patrick in Chicago. He switched from cable to 5G Home because of the speed 
and latency benefits. Developing apps requires some serious bandwidth, and it's wireless he prefers. 5G Home is already available to 70 million households, and in just a few years, it will be a real option for hundreds of millions of Americans. We are closing the digital divide and creating new competition all at once. And we're just at the beginning of the 5G decade. I'm so excited for what the next few years will bring, because I know this industry will be up for any challenge thrown at us. The extraordinary efforts made to keep us connected during the pandemic are well known. Our country now faces the threat of record inflation hitting all of our wallets. Seven to nine percent inflation actually masks double-digit spikes in goods from. Electricity to gas, cars, groceries, and many more. The outliers, two clearly jump out at me: mobile phone plans and smartphones. I'm so proud that we are all keeping Americans connected and keeping prices under control. It's about being consumer focused. We also have a track record. Of providing more for less. Over the past 10 years, while data use and speed skyrocketed, your prices were cut in half. All of this shows what our industry can do with the right policies, and why policy matters. Take Zvanda's proof. Turning on a portion of that spectrum saw speeds increase up to 50%. And that was 100 megahertz. Imagine what 150 or 200 more could do. Well, we shouldn't have to imagine. It can be done, and to meet the ambitions of Jim, Liz, Anand, Professor Liu, and Dr. Tom, we need to do it. We need more midband, licensed midband in large contiguous blocks. More spectrum. Is critical for us to continue to expand on this 5G platform, and we know that Spectrum is a team effort. We need Congress to authorize auction authority and direct specific future auctions. We need NTIA and the FCC empowered to make those auctions possible, speaking for the government with one voice. We need a plan to commercialize. The lower three, four, and seven gigahertz that preserves agencies' abilities to meet their mission empowers our future too. The stark reality: today, the government controls two thirds of available midband, and unlicensed has roughly four times more spectrum than licensed. We can and need to find a better balance: balance between commercial and government. Licensed and unlicensed. This will ensure that we have enough spectrum to meet 5G's full potential. And when we do, amazing things can happen. We can tackle the biggest challenges, and we can tackle day-to-day -day challenges in communities and schools across the country. With that in mind, I want to leave you with one more example of 5G innovation. Earlier this year, we met Kai, a teacher at a Title I school in Virginia. When her field trip budget was cut, she wanted to make sure her students still had those experiences. Wi-Fi wasn't enough. The rollout of 5G made her dreams possible, and now she's an entrepreneur using 5G to transform the classroom and bring the world of learning to every child. Meet Kai. My name is Kai Frazier, and I am the founder and CEO of Kai XR. Our main product is our virtual field trips. For using 5G, kids can explore 100 plus VR field trips on any device. Tasks include the repair and maintenance of crucial equipment. I hope you enjoyed your tour of the Obama portraits and learn about new careers, new sights, new sounds, and it really changes your outlook on life. I taught at mostly Title I schools. 
Title I schools receive very little funding. So that means that regular tech that you would expect does not make it to our schools, or we couldn't go on field trips. So I wanted to find a way to connect them to those experiences. I had seen VR in museums before, and it looked like that could be a solution to bring museums to my students in a mobile-based way. When I started KaiXR, we were using very shoddy Wi-Fi that would keep pausing, and it just wasn't working. So we saw with 5G, we had faster experiences, we had lower latency. It makes it so kids can see our content in a high quality. So we're showing them careers, we're showing them new ideas, and that really changes their outlook on life. So it took a lot of kids off the sidelines and they could participate with emerging tech. And 5G helps us connect those kids.